What's up, viewers? Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment, taking a break from GTA San Andreas. Yeah, I know. It's weird that having spent a lot of time playing the game and claiming it's one of my favorite games, I needed a break. But hey, I decided to go on an adventure into the country of Skyrim. And I am doing a walkthrough of a very interesting place in Skyrim, Lost Valley Redoubt. This redoubt contains Forsworn, and if you work your way through like I did in this video, you get a very interesting education in Forsworn culture. This is also the first Skyrim video I am making using the clear click capture box I did an unboxing about a while ago. So let us begin. Lost Valley Redoubt is actually very difficult to get to, and the location for the main entrance is in a very narrow valley. I didn't look up the name of the valley, but if you look on the map here, it's in this valley, and there's Lost Valley Redoubt, and it's halfway between Fort Sungard and Valthum. If you get the Valthum, you can actually get to the valley, and, you know, Old Horror... Lando or whatever, you can get to the Lost Valley entrance, and when you enter the Lost Valley, you're better off doing it sneaky-like. And I'm going to arm up with the Dragon Bow, Dragon Bone Bow, and start to creep in, because they have, the Forsworn, should I say, have guards posted, and they're actually really tough. This is a adventure you should not go on at low level unless you have a ton of healing potions and are willing to use them up very quickly because the Forsworn are very vicious fighters. And again, this is a really beautiful area in a way, valley of sorts, and again, it's one of my more favorite adventures to go through. I did it one time at like 8 level and got beat up. Now if you look, up there is a Forsworn guard. He usually sees you coming. If you're sneaking, he ignores you. And you gotta stay close to the edge. As you can see, there's dead bodies on display trying to warn people away. They have booby traps laid out. If you come around here, there is... A booby trap and then you also see a guy kind of doing something he's a forsworn and you shoot him at a distance a forsworn pillager uh, let's see if I can knock him down yep now everyone's kind of looking for me but I'm gonna hide and as you can see the trap somehow is already triggered it's a rock slide trap and once the guy up there, you're hidden, you can keep creeping through. And this guy up at that point, if you can't really see him, you can see him later. Now, here's the rock trap, and there was a trip wire that, for some reason, it got triggered. But this guy right here, let's take a look at what he has. Yeah, nothing. And you keep creeping around, and what was he working on? I mean, look at the view of this and how well rendered it is. It looks ancient, and you have a dead Breton or Nord, and you keep creeping up. And you look for, there's a tripwire, and you set it off, and that has another rock slide trap. Now, if you get up to an area like right here, you can kind of snipe the um, Forsworn Guard, who's kind of lookout. And 
let's get a good beat on him and hit him. Yep, he knows someone's trying to shoot him and he goes running. Um, don't worry about it. Just keep creeping up. And if you keep creeping up, if anything, they have these hide shields set up. And you look at it, they have, yeah, they're kind of gross. Forsworn are Daedra worshipping. But their culture is kind of interesting. And again, I'm creeping through this, and I'll point this out once I get through. As you can see, there's the guard that, or alt looker, or whatever, the Forsworn who you shot. And then there's this guy, and you shoot him, another Forsworn pillager. Okay, now they know you're coming. But my sneak is so high. Yep, beautiful kill shot there. But my sneak is so high, they practically, even if they're on top of me, have a hard time seeing me. And that's due to a lot of enchantment. When you get your sneak high, this guy has some decent stuff. I'll take my ebony arrows back. The rest is forsworn stuff. And this guy, carrot, take the arrows back. But there's a lot of decent treasure in this Redoubt. If you look around, like I'll take his salmon steak and um, mm, let's see some food. Delicious. Now there's this treasure chest in this tent, and it's open. It contains a few gold or arrows I can sell. And you walk around this pool here. I'm gonna flip to third person view. This tent here has a locked chest, expert lock. Again, I enchanted my lock picking up to pretty high, so a lot of this is somewhat easy to me. I maybe will go through an explanation. Uh, if you look for, and way over here is a chest, if you look up the um, restoration loop, you can really get your enchantments high. It kind of makes the game a little boring, but you look up here, that's another point on the map, which I will deal with. But I'm going to come over here to this outlook. You know, this pool and that. That's I'll explain that later. But look at how nicely everything is rendered. I mean, you got a great view of the valley. And the stream here. There's the aqueduct. And other things. Like I said, I mean, this is why I like Skyrim. Look at how well everything was really rendered and the even the bad guys like the forsworn have a very decent story to them and it was well thought out now you walk through and you go back into again sneak mode which i will be doing now and first person view and walk up these steps there's traps. This one is a typical trap. You gotta avoid the warning bells in a way. And there's this trap wire right here. You trip it, and that's a ram. That's a mastodon head. Now I'm gonna stop talking and let you hear and maybe comment later. He's decided to let the hags turn him into a Briarheart. That's a true Reachman. Hope he heads to Markarth to take out some of those Nords. One of the four sworn guys is going to let hag ravens turn him into a Briarheart. Briarhearts are very powerful magic wielding Forsworn, and it's part of their culture, the Reachmen to turn into these things and the hag ravens hag ravens and forsworn very much daedra worshiping magic using and gross brutal gothic type creatures but very interesting that they would be turned into a briar heart and usually it's a forsworn pillager who is now moved up to a briar heart now this is where sneaking 
again, they don't see me. I have it magically enhanced to, in Skyrim, 80% usually is the maximum effect. But in this case, I have the sneak ability enhanced to technically over 100%, but because 80% is the most, I guess you could say, effective, and that's the Skyrim cap, um, they still can't see me. So there's a Briar Heart, and I shot him. Let's see if I can take him down. Briar Hearts are really good for making potions. So let's see. Yep, he can't even see me. He barely even notices that I'm around, and he's on top of me. Must be my imagination. And they're walking away. They can't see me. So I'll just uh, shoot him again. Now they're coming for me. They're bumping into me. They can't see me. Again, this is magically enhanced sneak. And muffle works the same way. So, you know, it's kind of gaming the game. But again, look up restoration loop and figure out how to do that. I might do a uh, video on that later. But again, I'm just going to keep sneaking through here and taking what I can. Forsworn can have really good loot or terrible loot. It depends. And again, usually Forsworn pillagers are mid-level or almost a powerful thing, but now I'm going to sneak up here and I'm going to switch to a non-third person view. I mean, look at that. This is the lower level here. Again, look how beautifully it is rendered and the view. And I'm going to walk up this aqueduct because there is treasure at the end of it. I'm probably going to get into... Since I'm walking, someone's going to spot me. But there is a coin bag at the end of this aqueduct. And look at that. That's level two. Ah, someone just hit me with something. So I'm going to take the coin purse. Take a look around there. Again, my armor is solid enough. There's the Forsworn somewhere. I'm going to get into a duel with him right there. Take him down at distance. And he's coming at me. And this should be the last Forsworn. Bam. Nice kill shot. Took him down. Now I'm going to walk around and point some things out to you. This redoubt is actually fairly elaborate. I mean, yeah, I'll take this stuff, my ebony arrow back. Um, if you look around up here, there's a tanning area with some potion and salt, but you can tan if you have hides and cut them into leather and strips. There's some potions here. Ultimate healing, I'll take. Version to frost poison, I can't grab that. What's in this satchel, small pearl. Again, some of these ingredients I can use or sell later, and I'll dump the Forsworn arrow in there. It's kind of useless. Um, using the restoration loop and uh, some other things, you can actually enchant yourself up a pretty nifty if you take the armor, t take down the goat because he's annoying. He follows you. And if you have the right ingredients or whatever, you can make yourself a nifty Forsworn powerful armor and weapons. Now I'm going to go over this area and there's nothing really at the end of it, but you get a good view of the redoubt. There's the lower level and then the this is the second level and then you walk back and there's that third level and the third level, again, this is a very elaborate redoubt where if you had materials, you could craft yourself some weapons, armor, 
they make improvements. There's this chest here. Conundrum ingot. Gold. Again, it's very well laid out. You have a forge and an anvil and a grinding wheel. Let's see if I have anything, if I can make something using the forge. Now nah, I don't have anything like hide or iron, so I can't really craft anything. So bone mold, whatever. Jewelry, can't make any of those. So, yep, I can't make anything. Maybe I can improve something. Chances are I can't, but I'll sit the grindstone. See if I can improve this force worn sword. Sword, sorry. Nope, can't. Don't have anything, so I'm just gonna dump the sword. And let's see. Toss the weapon aside. I don't need it. Can't sell it for much of anything. But up here, let's see if there's anything in this tent. Uh, vial of poison, that'll help. But again, this is very elaborate. And usually in the corners here, there's some hidden ore that you can mine. That chest I already checked, but eh, check again. Now we'll go up to the third level and see what's going on. This is where they actually have some resources to mine. And that's kind of why I carry a pickaxe. Uh, again, my carrying capacity is really super high because of the restoration loop. Again, I do some things that you think, well, it makes the game too easy. Let's just say what I do, it makes the game a little easier, but not to a level where I'm pretty much godlike in power. It just means that certain annoying things that happen that can get you killed won't kill me. In other words, what I do is, it's not like stubbing a toe will kill me. So, carrying my, my carrying capacity at an extremely high level, well, that makes it easier for me to bring stuff to the market and sell, and that's how you make more gold. Now, let's see, this is the guy I shot. Yeah, he's got some decent stuff. Oh, looks like an orcish dagger. I fought... Forgot to grab that. And then over here, it depends. These are eh, not so good gems. They're empty gems. So I'm just going to leave them alone. Now, if you come up here to this level and you go across the aqueduct, there is a treasure chest here, which you have to pick novice level, but it contains some decent items. We have... Gold, lock picks, potions, decent stuff. And you get a really good view here, which is really, again, why I like Skyrim a lot. Look at this. This is how it's laid out. You have various levels. And you got the second level, the third level, the aqueduct here, I believe. Let's walk down and take a look here. There is something at the end of this. If not... We'll just take a look around, and you get a good view of the redoubt, and nope. Okay, but take a look. There's the layers. There's the second level. The main level is out there. Got a good view of the valley, and the third level here, that leads up to a, a, a point, Bard's Leap or whatever, and I'll show you how to do that. But we're going to walk up to the final level of this whole redoubt. And I'll let that play out once we get there. Because this gives you a ceremony. Now if you walk up here. And you take a look here. Eh, decent view. But let's walk up to the final level here. Now I'm going to go third person view for now. Most people get to this bridge and they go to Bard's Leap which is there. But you look and you see some blood on the path here. If you go to the left, there is a blocked off area. I'm gonna walk up to it, sneak up to it, and let it play out for you. And I'm gonna shift, and I'm gonna put a save here because 
This, if you don't play it right, you can get killed. And I don't want to go through the entire redoubt again. So I'm going to sneak up here and get my, yep, dragon bone hammer and let things play out. just saw was the creation of a briar heart by hag ravens now i'm attacking these people and usually this is where even at a high level and armor and magic resistance you get attacked and killed i mean even with sneaking these are powerful creatures so i'm going to use extreme healing stamina minor healing and keep attacking this is why oh yeah awesome kill but this is why you want to use electricity in fighting magical creatures it reduces their magic now this briar heart was just created by hag ravens and if you go a little back into the video where i was sneaking around the forsworn camp they mentioned that one of their fellow forsworn was going to be created into a briar heart. This was pretty good ritual. You also have a word wall back here. There's some decent treasure here. Let's see what's in the pop carry satchel. Yeah, I can sell all this. And a briar heart, again, useful. You know, common soul gem, it's empty. Iron dagger. One of the things you get to see is staff of force worn. And then the word wall here. You have Word of Power, Learn Spirit, Become Ethereal, okay? Just adds to your uh, Becoming Ethereal. And then you got the... I've checked all this out. Oh, another Briar Heart. And take this chest, gold, empty lesser soul gem, mace. And now I'm going to go to Bard's Leap. And Bard's Leap is where you jump off you got to get to the very edge and leap off of yep bard's leap and if you jump off into the water and you do it right and don't die something else happens It's been a long time since someone took the leap. Longer still since any survived. I once performed the entirety of the Poetic Edda from atop Bard's Leap before trying my luck. Well, you can see how that turned out. of Bard's Leap and survive, the ghost of Az Azadal appears before you, tells you his story, and plays a silent music for you to raise your speech up. Now I'm going to fast forward through this and get to the bridge and talk about something else that 
is in the Lost Valley Redoubt. Okay, we get back to the Bloody Bridge. If you cross over a different direction, you head toward another, um, I guess you could say, adventure. And if you keep crossing, you see a chest here which has some gold war axe. I'll take the gauntlets, I can modify them. But this is Lost Valley Redoubt. There's Bard's Leap. And then there's the rest of the readout. You leave the readout and you get toward this tower which contains a hag raven. And this tower is part of, in a sense, the readout or the area to the readout. And you wind up with, yeah, cradle stone tower discovered. You come up here, you can take out the hag raven depending on your level and armor and magic resistance. Ah, uh, yeah. I can take her out pretty e easy at my level and armor. And there's some interesting stuff in here besides the hag raven feathers. You can find some potions and stuff if you look around. There's embalming tools and stuff. Ah, uh, you don't really need any of that. But you look around and... There's, ah, uh, there's a elixir, elixir of warrior, uh, linen wrap, troll skull for decoration. You come up here and you can get zapped. There's a trap, but it's only a minor shock trap there. Run across, grab the gem, good for recharging weapons, search the urn, a little gold, and nothing really around here. Um, coin purse. Again, if you switch the first person view and take a look around, jump back over, go all the way up to the top of the tower, and you have a egg. Eggs are usually good for crafting. And you take a look out, nice view of the valley below. And over there is Volfoom. You can actually go over these mountains to, and there's a troll cave where, I'll t I won't take you there, but I've already adventured to that troll cave. You can get to that from Volthoom, and I did a video a while back. I'll link it up into the upper right corner, but this is a lockpick, and you get a little dungeon down here. There is some, there's an urn. And that has some gold, the silver ring, glass dagger is good, uh, imperial helmet, I'll take that. Um, some of this stuff I can enchant and sell. Again, even with minor gems, you can make some enchantments and sell the resulting um, sword of arcing. Minor stuff you can sell and make a little extra money. Um, this is the final part here, Cradle Stone, but if you go down this direction, you can get to the Troll Cave where you find a Troll Slayer with an enchanted hammer. Again, I already did that. I will link to it in the description, as I've mentioned. I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. As always, Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to stop by my website, Barstool Entertainment, home of Teen Spider Adventures, posted every Sunday. And I'm going to repeat myself here. I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. As always, thanks for stopping by.